good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it again to finish up our AEW and Rival Collection Series 7 reviews on Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler, FTR from AEW, formerly known as The Revival. Excited to add these to the tag team division, man. AEW and Jazzwares have done a great job of adding tag teams to our AEW action figure collections. We'll probably take a look at all the different comparisons, man, but we have quite a number of tag teams. You definitely have a nice little division building here. I think this is our sixth or seventh tag team now. I'm pretty sure in figure form from AEW, so that's pretty cool here, but Dax and Cash looking pretty good in their packaging, as well as in this video, we are going to rank the full set of Unrivaled Series number 7 from worst to best, which should be a pretty fun deal. It should be fun to see where all these figures line up, man, but if you guys would like to grab these, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. Plenty of AEW figures, WWE figures, play sets, accessories, all things you need for your wrestling action figure collection. Collections. Ringside Collectibles use promo code MD Toys. But as we take a look, man, you guys will see they have their entrance jackets in package. You, get, you do get a pair of the AEW Tag Team Championships. On the side, you do get both men here holding their championships. Not like the Young Bucks, where they actually come with the titles, unlike the Bucks of Youth. On the side here, you do have their names here. They did fix it. It used to say Hardwood. I did see that in one of the little samples they made. Cash Wheeler, Dax Hardwood. On the side, you get an image of the men there. Also get the AEW logos there. On the back, they are wearing different gear, which is a very interesting take. This is from All Out 2020 where they took on the Young Bucks, but I don't know if the gear is wrong from the event or the picture is wrong from the event, but the Young Bucks are wearing what they wore in these figures, so I, I don't know what's going on there. AEW logos on the side, man, and that wraps up our packaging for these guys, man. So let's go ahead and crack them out so we can get started and then get into our ranking of AEW and Rival Collection Series number 7. So here's Dax and Cash out of the packaging, guys, looking pretty good, and they're all white gear with the red accessories. You know, we do have some white and red mixed together here with some black contrast. Really nice attire. I'm pretty glad that we got this attire. I would have liked to seen the green attire that is featured on the back of the packaging. However, I can get behind the gear that they actually gave us, so I, I'm on board either way. However, man, you guys know how the reviews work, and since it is a tag team and their accessories are borderline the exact same, we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at their accessories together. Then we'll dive into both of their figures back to back to get the details of all the figures and then we'll rank on the Rivaled Series 7 from worst to best. So let's get into the accessories. So with each member of FTR guys you do get removable entrance gear and you also get an AEW World Tag Team Championship. Now we have seen the championships quite a few times but no matter how many times we get them I think they do a really good job on the title belts. I love the way the blue pops off behind there. I love the way the AEW logos look. I know you get like four of them in a row there but I think they're pretty good looking tag titles. I, I like them a lot. I like them a lot more than WWE's. Probably just because, you know, WWE's had the same design forever, and then, you know, they've changed it multiple times while also not changing it. So, I don't know. I just, I hate those titles. I hate the way the tag titles look nowadays. So, I, I love the way these look. I think they look very clean, and getting them again in figure form look great. So, there they are up next to each other. You know, anytime we get a title belt, does it's kind of like a cloth accessory. No matter, no matter how many times we get it, never gonna complain about a title belt or some cloth accessories. Now, as far as their entrance gear goes, you guys can see here, we do get jackets, but they are rubber. They do clasp in in the front here so you have two little buttons in the front right there this is dax harwoods you see the d right there it is just solid red and then there's no logos on the back i guess that's accurate i don't know i don't remember but it's like you know that kind of leather letterman's jacket kind of look there without the white sleeves i guess but nice red color on there and then for dax harwoods you get the d on there and then for cash wheeler you do get what is it supposed to be an a so is it a ca because i don't think that's a w but it's the exact same jacket same mold you guys can see the wrinkles in there i i, I mean unless you're going to use these guys just on display if you don't care about them whatever i don't know i'd probably just get custom jackets made or something unless you don't care about that but you know it's a rubber accessory not my favorite we've seen a lot of rubber here lately so i'd like to see some cloth for jackets get back implemented into the unrivaled collection but there are the jackets man and that pretty much covers ftr's accessories so starting out with dax man starting out with the head sculpt not a big fan of this head sculpt i would say that cash's is a is a much better head sculpt at least you know in my opinion you guys can let me know down in the comment section below i just felt like this one's a bit cartoony or like it's just it doesn't capture that likeness that you like to see with a figure head sculpt but yeah just not my favorite head sculpt we go down into the torso we've seen this torso multiple times i think it works out for him you know i think you know it's not too detailed it's not like i think it definitely works for both these guys i'm pretty sure they use the exact same torso if i'm not mistaken cash is maybe a little different i don't know we'll have to see about that but down on the arms you guys got the black elbow pad painted on there he also has black wrist tape painted on there which is nice to see no tattoos on the front or nothing like that white trunks with a dax logo right there or the d logo on there. No, 
nothing else on the back of the white trunks. You have the regular legs here. Got your nice logo here. Black knee brace that is removable. You got white and red knee pads going on. Solid white knee pad on the left side. And then you have black wrestling boots. You know the FDR, man. They are uh, just some plain Jane wrestling machines, man. Like, they don't go over the top with the gear. I, even though I do love this white gear. But if we get into Cash, starting out with the head sculpt. I think the likeness to Cash is much better than the likeness to Dax. But it's still not my favorite head sculpt. I think the likeness is there, but it's still... I still think the Mattel ones are probably a little bit better. A lot of people are saying this head sculpt's too small. I mean, it may be a little bit too small, but you guys can see there he's got, like, the mohawk design going down the sides there. Would have liked to see a fade down the sides instead of the solid right there, but not a huge deal. But, you know, it's a better head sculpt than Dax back there. Going down to the torso. The torso does... It looks like, like it's the same, but it also, at the same time, it looks like it may have a little bit more definition, if I'm not mistaken. But it's like they're the same, but Cash's has a little bit more de definition, if you guys are seeing that. So that's kind of crazy. On the trunks, it is in white. You have the Cash going across there with the dollar sign. Pretty sick right there. I like that. I like the Cash figure overall, I think, better than the Dax figure. He's got the black wrist tape on the left arm. He has nothing going down. He's got the same knee pads here. Same design knee pads as Dax, but they're actually different molds here. So you guys will see these are molded differently than those. These are actually smaller than the ones that Dax has. So that's pretty interesting there. Logo again, white and red, and then these solid black boots for the guy. But the one thing that's interesting is that I think, I can't remember if it was Cash or Dax, but one of them was like shown off in the render image to have kick pads. So I'm glad that they ended up not having kick pads, but let's get into our figure comparisons here. And here's our Unrivaled Series 7 FTR up next to our WWE Mattel Elite NXT figure, Revival figures. And I will say that I like the scaling of the Unrivaled figures, but I like the head sculpts of the Mattel. And I also think that these figures would probably look better if they had chest hair. Like Cash, if he had chest hair and stomach hair, would probably, like both of them actually, both of them need some chest hair and stomach hair, so that'd probably make them look a bit better. These are also, I always felt like their torsos were too small and their legs were too small. So I think we could create like a really nice hybrid figure if we were to merge the two together. And we'll see what we can do about that on surgery or something like that. But I really like the Unrivaled Series 7 FTR figures. I just think that uh, we need to fix them up a little bit there. But if anybody, I mean, I guess you could see the, the head size is a little bit small when you compare it to the other figures here. But I don't know, man. Let me know what you think. Are you Team Mattel Elite or Team AEW Unrivaled? All right, guys, it is that time of the video where we rank Unrivaled Collection Series number 7 from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Now, you guys know the criteria for the ranking. Before we get into the ranking at all, though, before we cover the rules of the ranking, just because a figure comes in at number one doesn't mean it's without flaws, and just because a figure comes in at the bottom doesn't mean it doesn't have any redeeming qualities about the figure whatsoever. So, just because figure's number one doesn't mean it can't have something that sucks about it, and just because the figure's at the bottom doesn't mean it doesn't have anything good about it. Now, if we dive into the criteria for the ranking, excitement level for the figure, how the figure feels in hand, how articulated is the figure, and how, you know, how well does it pose, likeness to the actual character in real life, accessories can play a role, how much usage am I going to get out of the figure, and just overall, how I feel about the figure. Now, with all those things being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into our ranking starting out at the bottom. Coming into the bottom for me, man, is going to be Nyla Rose. Now, I think they're going to be able to improve this figure a lot in the future because uh, there's a lot of mistakes with this one, so I felt like the likeness could be a bit better with this figure. There's no lower leg articulation whatsoever, so like the boot doesn't rotate whatsoever. I think the boots look very Jax like You guys are seeing that? Like, I know I'm not insane. They look like Jack's boots. My waist wrap right here, when you lift it up, it's actually coming all the way off. Like, the glue is coming separated right there. Somebody said that the back is never showing in her gear. Every time I articulate her head, her head comes off, like, every single time. Like, every single time. Like, I can't bend it forward slightly at all, and if I try to go back slightly at all, it pops off every single time, so that's pretty annoying. And I don't think I'm gonna get as much usage out of this as the rest of the wave. And the ab crunch is not, it's not there, man. It's non-existent. And when I try to push it down, the head pops off or the to top torso pops off. So lots of problems with the Nyla Rose figure. And I felt that it could have been a lot better. So I'm going to go with Nyla Rose at the bottom. A lot of people saying that she was too small too. Like, I don't know if that's true or not. But you guys can let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. Now moving on to number five. This was actually pretty, pretty hard to do. But I think at the end of the day, man, I'm going to go with the Dax Harwood figure. I think it's the head sculpt really that throws me off. I don't like this head sculpt whatsoever for Dax Harwood. I just 
just feel like it's missing a lot of likeness here. The rest of the figure is pretty good though, you know? The rest of the figure is pretty good. I just think, you know, head sculpt is what makes a figure. Head sculpt is what makes a figure, you know? So, and since this head sculpt is pretty bummerific to me, I'm gonna have to rank him at the number five spot, man. It really pains me because I love the gear. I love the knee brace and everything like that, but I think that it just got beat out. Like, uh, these next few right here are really, really close and you could interchange them any way you wanted to, but I have him at number five. Coming in at number four, man, I'm going with the Matt Jackson figure. I do not like this head sculpt. I don't like the way the hair mold is, the way it sits on top of the head. It just looks a bit odd, and the head sculpt pops off really easily, just like the Nyla Rose figure. There's no wrist tape on it, which makes it very plain Jane. I didn't really care for the going back to the Series 1 bell bottoms look here for the pants, so that kind of pained me too. I love the Young Bucks. I love the Young Bucks, probably one of my favorite tag teams in the world, if not my favorite tag team, so I love them. I think they're fantastic, but this head sculpt's not doing it for me, and it was just kind of meh, so I'm going to go with the Matt Jackson at the number four spot. Coming in number three, man, I'm going to go with the Cash Wheeler. Solid figure, just like Harwood. However, the head sculpt is a bit small there, but it does have better likeness than the previous two head sculpts, and it is in the white gear. I just think, you know, that likeness is really kind of what beat out the rest of the figures in the wave, so pretty nice there. He also has some tattoos on there, which is nice. Figure does feel good in the hand, though, I will say. Like, it, it feels like it's going to pose really, really well, and it feels like it may be tighter than the Dax Harwood figure, but there is Cash at number three. And the last two men, number two and number one, is going to be Lance Archer and Nick Jackson, and I'm going with number two Nick Jackson, number one Lance Archer. At the end of the day, the Nick Jackson is pretty much just a re-release and a repaint, but the overall quality of it, I think, you know, the, the head sculpt shows more likeness. I like the gear of it and everything like that. It barely beat out. Like, again, five through two was very easy, easy to interchange. Could have easily put any figure there, but number one is going to be Lance Archer. Great head sculpt. Great looking, a great looking attire. I love the boots. I love, you know, the way the figure looks and everything like that. Feels good in the hand, but that head sculpt is like undefeated. The only things I don't like about the figure is maybe the skin tone could be a little bit darker, and also the body parts choices probably could have been a bit better. I think uh, a bigger torso would have been really cool. But yeah, man, that pretty much wraps up our ranking. I think the Lance Archer is the best in the set and the most exciting figure out of the set there. So redoing the ranking, man, I got Archer at one, Nick at number two, Cash at number three, Matt at number four, Dax at number five, and Nyla coming in at the bottom of the ranking. But if you guys would like to grab this full set, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Do not forget to go over there and grab all your WWE, AEW, and every wrestling action figure that you would like. Had a ton of fun reviewing and ranking this set, man. Overall thoughts on the full set, definitely probably the weakest set, I would say, like off the top of my brain in recent memory. In my entire memory, I think the full set is kind of weak. It. I think just the overall quality and the gears and like just the different things about the wave, I feel like this set may be the worst they've made so far. However, that's going to wrap up our ranking of AEW Series number 7 overall, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy the full video. Let me know what your ranking is down in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok at my damn toys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you, and don't cross the line like, uh, I guess, the full Series 7, right? In some way, the whole line kind of crossed the line. Said line twice. Now I've crossed the line. Now I did it again. You crossed the line, I've been beat.